Hi, gang. In this movie, I'm going to show you how to properly trace a photo of a garment using Adobe Illustrator. Now, I've got a photo of a t-shirt on a model, and you can see she's not facing straight forward. I've noticed a lot of tutorials out there showing how to trace a garment like this using the pencil tool, and the outcome is going to look something like this. Now, you may like the look of it, you may think it's kind of cool because of the wrinkles and things, but it's not a technically accurate flat and it's not useful in the fashion industry. It's really important that a flat be accurate. It should look more like this because the flat is designed to give to the pattern maker to either make a pattern from or to include in a tech pack and it needs to be technically accurate in order to do that. Tracing a photo with a pencil won't get you that result. So let's talk about the right way to do it. The first thing you must do always, 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 I can't stress this enough, is to start with a template. All flats need to be drawn on a template because they need to be correctly to scale and proportional. So I've got my template in my file and the next thing I'm gonna do is paste the photo that I copied. So let's make a new layer and paste the photo. Now, as you can see, the photo is much larger than my template, and it's also opaque, making it hard to work with. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my properties, select the appearance panel, select opacity, and lower the opacity so I can see what I'm doing. So I've lowered that to 50%, and now we can adjust this to the template. You can see it's much bigger than the template, so I'm going to start by reducing it, and I'm going to move it so it's centered as best I can, on the template. Now it isn't going to be perfect because this is not really a directly forward image, but I'm going to do the best to get it close. And it can shrink down just a tiny bit more. I'm always holding the shift key while I do this so that I keep my image constrained. And basically what I'm looking at is the center of the garment and I'm looking at the shoulders to make sure they're sitting about the right place on my template. I'm also looking at the hem in relation to the crotch. So I think this needs to go a tiny bit larger. I'm going to nudge it into place using my arrow keys, but I'm basically looking at where the shoulders are hitting. And now that I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to go back to my layers and lock the layer that has this image in it. I'll make a new layer and now I can start drawing. So the important thing is to draw the shirt and I'm going to use the photo for landmarks, but I need to use the template in order to draw this. That's what really matters here. Now, as I'm looking at it, I think I'm over a little bit too far. So I'm going to unlock it and just nudge it to the left a little bit more. There we go. Till I'm happy with the placement. And I think that'll work pretty well. So I'm going to lock it again. All right. I start with my default fill, I grab my pen tool, and we're going to draw this methodically, just like we would draw an actual flat. We're just taking advantage of the photo for landmarks. So I'm going to start at the neckline, go down to the shoulder, under the armhole, and down to the hem. And I can gauge the hem length here by looking at the image. So we'll click there. I'm going to curve the armhole just a little bit. And then I'm going to select this whole piece and reflect it to the other side. So O to reflect, Alt click on the center guide, vertical, copy, and now I can select both sides, right click, join, right click, join. Now the hem of this shirt is rounded, so I'm going to grab my anchor point tool and give it a nice curve to follow along with the curve the shirt should have. And maybe go just a little bit further so we really can tell it's a curved bottom. So it would look something like that. Then I need to curve the neckline. I'm going to click and drag down below the neckline, always along the center line so I can see where it is. And then I'm going to drag it back up so it sits right where the neckline sits. Now I'm going to add my sleeves. Grab the white arrow, going to select the armhole, copy it, paste in front, I'm going to grab my pen tool, and now I'm going to draw down the sleeve. And I'm gauging the length of the sleeve looking at the photo. So it's going to hit about there, and we'll go across and close. So I'm using the photo, but I'm following the template. To do the sleeve now, I'm going to gauge the size of the cuff and draw a line straight across the size of the cuff. We'll zoom in a little closer so you can see it better. You need to get the anchor point tool, 
going to curve this up a little bit and curve this up a little bit so the curves match. And now with the black arrow, select both pieces, Pathfinder, Divide, right click, ungroup. That's the start of the sleeve. I'm also going to grab the white arrow, select this bottom line, copy, paste in back, control B, right click join, and with the anchor point tool I'm going to curve out the bottom just a little bit and fill it with gray so you can see it's the back side of the sleeve. Now when you have a cuff, the cuff should stand out a little bit wider than the actual sleeve. So I'm going to use the white arrow and I'm going to grab the outer corner of the cuff and I'm going to nudge it over just one or two clicks with my arrow keys. Now I've got my arrow keys set at a smaller nudge than you probably do because I like to be able to finesse things. So to adjust your nudge, you're going to go to Control or Command K to open up your preferences. And the default setting here is one point, but I have it set to point one point, so it only moves when I nudge it one-tenth of a point, which gives me even more control. So there's one sleeve done. Now I can reflect this to the other side. So I'll select the sleeve, O to reflect, Alt or Option click on the center guide, vertical, copy. And I want to make sure the last thing is that this is perfectly in place on this side and it looks like it is. Now this particular shirt I can see from the photo has a drop shoulder. So in order to get that look I'm going to select the entire top bodice and the top parts of the sleeves. I did not select the cuffs. I'm going to go to Pathfinder and unite them together. And sometimes when you use Pathfinder, if things aren't perfectly aligned, you get this, these little kind of artifacts. So let's talk about how to fix that. I'm going to use the Delete and Anchor Point tool and just delete this anchor point. And there's one more here. And this is a handle, not an anchor point. So I can use the white arrow and just squish that handle all the way back to that anchor point. And lastly, I want to delete an anchor point because there are two, one right on top of each other. So I'm going to take the minus sign and I'm going to click to release one of those anchor points. And the other side looks good. We don't have to worry about it. So now what we're going to do oh, is get rid of this one at the bottom. So we'll delete that. And now we have a handle and we're going to just squish that handle in. Now the reason that happened is because when I reflected I wasn't perfectly on center. So it's something you want to be careful about, although it is fixable. So now with my pen tool I'm going to draw a path where that drop shoulder should hit. So I'm clicking outside of the sleeve to this armhole point here and then outside just to make sure that it's really crossing. Now I'm going to curve it a little bit with the anchor point tool. We'll take that and reflect it to the other side. So O to reflect, I'll click on my center guide, vertical, copy, and now we've got it in the other side. I can select the bodice of the shirt along with those two dividing lines and do Pathfinder, Divide, right click, ungroup. And now I've got the shirt looking much nicer. Now if I fill this with white, and we'll fill the sleeves too, You'll notice that now I've got super, super pointy shoulders, and we don't want that. There's a very easy way to fix it. With the white arrow, I'm going to select the anchor point on each shoulder, and then grab this little target for corner rounders, and drag in so I round the corners into a nice smooth shoulder instead of that point. Now we'll deal with the neckline. I'll get rid of the fill again just so we can see it, and we can gauge how wide the neckline is supposed to be. So with the pen tool, I'm going to draw a line that goes from this side. I'm holding my shift key to keep it straight to the other side. Grab the anchor point tool, click along the center line, and drag it down so that it's even all the way around. We want this to be a consistent band. And now I can take that and we'll select it, the shirt and the dividing line. And I'm going to do Pathfinder Divide, right click, ungroup. So that takes care of that division. We need to do the back neckline, so we're going to use the white arrow. We're going to select just this top piece, copy, control C, paste in back, control B, right click, join. 
back necklines are always smiling, so we need to curve this down like so. And then I'm going to fill it with gray because it's the back side of the shirt. The last thing we need to deal with are the stitches on the bottom. So again, from the image, I'm going to gauge approximately how high up they are and add my stitches. With the white arrow, I'll select the hemline, copy it, paste in front, and I'm going to nudge it up a little bit. And to make the nudge go faster, if you'd set it low like I did, you can hold the shift key while you're nudging, and that will move it 10 times as fast. We'll add my double needle top stitch. Where is it? There's my top stitch. We're just going to make sure that these lines don't go over. So I'm going to add an anchor point and then delete an anchor point. Do the same on this side. Add an anchor point and then delete the one on the end just to make sure that doesn't go over the edge of my shirt. We'll zoom back out. We're going to fill this with white. And that is how you draw a shirt from a photo. Now you can take it just a little bit further if you really feel like you need to add some movement to this. We can do a little wrinkle on the bottom. Let's zoom into the bottom of the shirt. Make sure the shirt itself is selected. And with the pen tool, I can draw over this path and edit it a little bit. So maybe we'll come up and down a little bit and give it a little bit of wrinkle. In that case, this line needs to follow that wrinkle. So I'm going to switch back to the white arrow. I'm going to delete this. We're going to select this bottom hem, making sure not to grab the two corner points. Copy, paste in front. I'm going to arrow up a couple of times. You can see I missed a spot there. Not a big deal. We'll select that piece. Copy, paste in front. Nudge that up a couple of clicks to match. And then I can take the two pieces and right click join to connect them together and now we'll add top stitches to it so it follows my curve. So now that that's done, I'm going to select the entire shirt, right click, group it together, and we'll even add a two point stroke around the outside, and that is what it should look like. So there's how you do it, an accurate flat from a photo. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you found it useful, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can get notified every time I post new content. Thanks for watching.